the giant asteroid slammed into Earth and a while after that, dinosaurs were gone. You'd think there's nothing to be afraid of now, but nope, some pretty unique and scary beasts started to evolve after that. Back at that time, mammals were going through significant changes. It seems that some of them, like those similar to horses and rhinos, became giant and powerful very soon after the dinosaurs were gone. When dinosaurs were in charge, which was about 145 to 66 million years ago, mammals were relatively small creatures. Most of the time, they lived in the shadows of their much bigger enemies to avoid ending up as their dinner. Many of them weighed around 22 pounds or even less. But when the dinosaurs went extinct, mammals finally had a chance to take advantage of the new environment. For example, Brontotheris. It took this opportunity and grew to enormous sizes. They started at around 40 pounds and eventually reached weights of 4 to 5 tons in just 16 million years. This sounds long, but it's relatively short in geological terms. Their large body size gave them and some other mammals an advantage after the dinosaurs disappeared. Now, they were the dominant and ferocious creatures others were afraid of. Brontotheris, whose fossils have been found in North America, got this cool name, Thunder Beasts, from the Sioux people, because they believed these fossils came from giant thunder horses that would roam the plains during thunderstorms. And it's still a mystery how these Thunder Beasts got to grow so big so quickly. One of the theories says that they gradually increased in size over time. Another option is they went through rapid bursts of growth but also had periods where they didn't quite change. Or maybe there was a mix of species. Some were small and some were bigger, but in general, more of them ended up growing large. And scientists studied a family tree of 276 thunder beasts and realized the third option fits the best. It's all competition in nature. Back in that time, most mammals were small, so there was fierce competition among smaller plant-eating animals when it came to food. The larger ones, like thunder beasts, faced less competition for the resources they needed to survive. So bigger species had more chances to stay, while the smaller ones went extinct quickly. So yeah, the end of the dinosaur era doesn't mean the end of impressive and giant animals you'd also run away from. For example, I definitely wouldn't like to face this fella. It kind of reminds me of a giant sloth at first, but those evolved tens of millions of years later. This giant lived somewhere between 50 and 60 million years ago in North America. It was around 8 feet long and had an unusually massive and thick body and legs. Its tail was very thick as well. This beast must have used it to support itself and stand on its hind legs. Its skull was relatively short and small compared to its large body. What's interesting is that it still had collarbones, which are bones that most hooved animals don't have anymore. Here's something comforting that makes it less scary though. They probably ate plants that were soft enough to chew easily. Now, imagine a snake so big it could easily rival the size of a T-Rex. It's not some mythical creature from fiction movies, but Titanoboa, the incredible beast that lived around 60 million years ago in the lush forests and rivers of South America. It was the largest snake ever that we know about. It was actually like the ancient ancestor of today's boas and anacondas that still live in the same region. Its body was a mind-boggling 42.7 feet long, which is longer than a school bus. To support its giant body, Titanoboa had about 250 vertebrae, which are the bones that make up the backbone of animals. Imagine how much it needed to eat to maintain such a massive body that was as heavy as a small car. It went after fish and crocodiles that lived in the waters and rivers of its home. A snake taking down a crocodile? It had to be a powerful beast. Titanoboa holds the record at the moment. But scientists believe we might discover more fossils of snakes that could be even bigger than this one. You know there has to be some scary crocodile on the list. Back in the dino era, there were even crocodiles that were 40 feet long and enjoyed snacking on dinosaurs. You can tell they haven't become less scary even after that. This beast lived between 15 million and 55 million years ago in what is now Venezuela, Peru, and Argentina. 
It belonged to a group that was there during the time of the dinosaurs, but like many others, got to live their best years and thrived after the dinos disappeared. Unlike most crocodiles that stick to the edge of the water, you could easily come across this one since it liked to take walks on the land to check what was happening around. Check out its flattened blade-like teeth. They remind of those carnivorous dinosaurs even more than other crocodiles. This adaptation helped with catching prey during its chill afternoon walks on land. This fearsome creature could grow to over 20 feet long and weigh more than 3,000 pounds which is bigger than today's saltwater crocodiles. Even a rhinoceros came in the XXL size in those post-dino times. This one, whose name I can't even try to pronounce, was a massive herbivore that lived in eastern Eurasia. It looked like a rhino, but it still had some differences, like its neck that was stretching over six feet long, which made it look like a rhino with a giraffe's neck. The creature stood more than 15 feet tall at the shoulder, towering over most other animals of its time. It looks slender, but it's still incredibly heavy with its 33,000 pounds, which is like two to three grown African elephants, or even a small house. One of the biggest carnivores that wandered Ice Age Australia wasn't a mammal, but this frightening reptile called Megalania. It could grow to be over 18 feet long, which is more than twice longer than the Komodo dragon, one of the largest lizards alive today. Megalania had sharp curved teeth similar to those of Komodo dragons, which means its bite was extremely powerful and maybe even venomous. This venom worked in a way it could have prevented its prey from healing property, which means the poor animal would become weaker, so Megalania didn't even have to work that much to catch it after that first bite no matter where its prey would try to escape. Moving on to birds now. An elephant bird stood almost 10 feet tall and weighed over a thousand pounds. You could see it on the island of Madagascar more than a thousand years ago, which is not even that long ago compared to the others. One of the multiple species of elephant bird was so big that it could rival some non-avian dinosaurs, such as Utahraptor when it came to size and its eggs were gigantic too. Just one egg could weigh more than 20 pounds, which is heavier than a bowling ball. The interior of its egg had a lot of space, so much you could hold more than 100 chicken eggs inside. Land and air weren't safe from big beasts where you couldn't be sure if it wanted to eat you or your salad. And it was not much different in the water either. You've heard of Liviatin, right? It was an ancient, powerful predator and a type of sperm whale, but much larger and more fearsome than those we know today. While modern sperm whales mostly eat squid, Liviatin probably had a little bit different diet, which included other whales. Another giant predator was also roaming around the same time and place as Liviatin. Who else but our dear megalodon shark? Scientists believed Megalodon also went after other whales, and the fight for the sweetest bite, or even among each other, was probably spectacular. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.